that you don't know how to take me or to receive me but what you don't understand is that who I am is not contingent on your validation or your cosign if you leave me I'll still be me talk about me I'll still be me let me lose my job I'll still be fly because there is something about me that you will not understand on the layer you got to go deep sea scuba diving to understand the merit of who I am I know it's a lengthy parcel of scripture, but it encompasses the full context of what I want to share with you on today. Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 20. Liturgical dancers, you were phenomenal today. Thank you so very much. <laughs> Music ministry, minstrels, I appreciate you. Matthew 16, verses 13 through 20. Would you read silently as I read aloud? When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? Sam and Peter answered, you are the Messiah the son of the living God. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my father in heaven. Look at verse 18. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Verse 19, I'll give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven, Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose in earth will be loosed in heaven. Verse 20, then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. You may be seated in the presence of our God. Jesus asked the disciples, who do people say that I am? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah. Jesus said, forget about all of them. Y'all roll with me. What do you think I am? And only Simon Peter answered. He said, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. I want to preach for a little while today using as a subject, I wish you really knew me. I wish you really knew me. Would you look at the person beside you and tell them, I wish people really understood me. I wish you really knew me. I want to share a true story that didn't take place outside of an H&M department store but it happened in the heart of Spain. Police were alerted about a gorilla who somehow had gotten loose outside of Laurel Park Zoo. Investigators immediately dispatched a veterinarian who was armed with a tranquilizer to subdue the beast before he could exact damage on the community and fear on that city. The act of bravery very soon turned into buffoonery when it was discovered that it was actually a human in a gorilla suit. The truth of the matter is the zoo was running a gorilla escape drill. And one of the workers was clad in the costume to test capture and recovery time. Spinning out of control, the zoo and the police department came into collusion and conveyed to the press 
that it was simply a case of mistaken identity. While the Constitution affords us the right to bear arms, many of us are grateful we didn't have access to a loaded weapon when it was unveiled that some of our characters from our past were dressed up like people when they are really wild animals. Maya Angelou famously said, when people show you who they are, you should believe them. Chris Rock in one of his early comedy sketches said when you first meet somebody, they send their representatives. And it's not until much later that you happen upon who they actually are. In this culture, it becomes tremendously difficult to know the essence of people's identity because everyone seems to be auditioning to be a model on Instagram even when there's no runway. A reality star on Snapchat when there are no cameras or contracts. My old friend Tupac Shakur got engrossed in being bishop on juice that he sometimes forgot he was a revolutionary poet. People become enamored by your shell that they never get exposed to your soul. And yet there's a cry from your inner being that's whimpering without the benefit of a microphone. I wish somebody really knew me. I wish somebody really understood me. I wish somebody got me. You remember when Jesus was 12 and attended the temple with his parents and was lost in discussion with the chief priest that his father caught up with him. He shook him, but Jesus watched his head to remind him that he was about his father's business. Folk don't understand, you don't get, they don't understand why you work so hard. They don't understand why you stay up so late. They can't figure out why you sacrifice so much. They are at loss as to how it is that you live on so little. They can't figure out how you keep to yourself because they just don't understand you. What many miss is that understanding. I want you to write this down. It's going to mess you up. It's going to blow your mind. And you're going to have to talk about it on Valentine's Day. I want you to have this. I'm t I promise you, you'll thank me later. Understanding. Would you write this down? Understanding is more important than love. Did y'all hear what I just said? Understanding is more important than than love. Understanding takes more work than falling in love. Understanding is what leads to genuine love. Love without understanding cannot last. Love without understanding is like having a beautiful sports car but not having the keys. If you understand me, then it won't be difficult for you to love me. God, you didn't hear what I just said. The people who don't love you don't understand you. I see you, you feel me, you're around me, but do you know me? No adult has ever looked back on their childhood. Not one adult has ever looked back on their childhood and complained, my parents understood me too much. Not one. Nobody has ever left divorce court telling the judge, I need to get out because they understand me so much. Conversely, many children never, never underestimate 
their parents, watch this, understanding, and it is woefully, bitterly unfortunate, and I've seen it as a pastor, how many children don't understand their parents' understanding of them until their parents are on a deathbed, until their parents are battling a terminal ill. I want to say to you that is unconventional even in church, but I, I'll take that risk. Love alone is not enough. I'm trying, sir. Love alone is not enough. If you profess to love me, but you don't understand me, you just like me a lot. And it will not, in fact, be able to be sustained because while that may be sufficient for you, it will not be adequate for me. The more that I am in love with you, it is the more that I understand you. That's why it's easy, please hear me very carefully, it's easy for people who don't know you not to like you. So most of the people who claim they don't like you really don't know you. So they don't like what they've heard about you or what they've assumed about you. And then when they get to know you, they have to apologize because it then goes against everything that they thought because you hated a figment of your own imagination. And so to love me, understand this, that I am complex. And because I am complex, small-minded people will be easily frustrated. So for people, watch this, who really do not have intelligence and creativity and depth, they will dismiss you as being too much. God, I can't hear anybody, but somebody who is plugged into you will understand you're just enough. So you have to stop apologizing to people who have become intimate strangers and cloak themselves as friends because it is their loss that they really don't know what a genuine, authentic person looks like. And so because I really love you, you don't even know that what I'm saying to you was never to offend you, but I love you enough to tell you you shouldn't have that on. I can't hear nobody. I'm your real friend. And because I'm your real friend, I'm not going to play games with you. And I'm going to tell you, you playing yourself. And that ain't going nowhere. I can't hear nobody. And so I don't mean to be cold or callous. My only problem is I'm honest. And you like liars. I can't hear nobody. And so because it is that I operate at a different standard, you don't know how to take me or to receive me. But what you don't understand understand is that who I am is not contingent on your validation or your cosign. If you leave me, I'll still be me. Talk about me, I'll still be me. Let me lose my job, I'll still be fly. Because there is something about me that you will not understand on the layer. You got to go deep sea scuba diving to understand the merit of who I am. Far too many failed relationships and friendships failed because they assumed, I want you to write this down, let's get ready to mess you up, I promise you. Uh, so many relationships failed because the other person assumed they grew apart. Or they felt like they became different people. If the truth be told, they relied too much on the love they had that they did not have the room for the love for who you were becoming. <laughs> so you did not run out of love, you ran out of understanding. So you love me, y'all ain't gonna like this, you love me naive. <laughs> you love me weak, you love me broken, but when I get 
the strength enough to love myself, then it's too much. I can't hear nobody in here. But if you love me, you shouldn't want to see me in a weakened state. And you ought to be able to celebrate the strides that I made to become who it is that God is fashioning to me. And I'm going to say this to you. If you are upset with who I am now, can I give you a warning label? When God gets through with me, I shall come forth as pure gold. The expression that comes to mind is I love you, but I'm not in love with you. Or you heard this one, it's not you, it's me. So they only loved the dimension of you that they had been exposed to. And then when they understand other elements to who it is that you are, then it is that they become intimidated. So they are enamored by you being cute, having a shape, having a figure, having a car, and having money, but they were not prepared for you having a mind. So, so when you begin to think out loud, I can't hear nobody, then they begin to try to put you down and they're not putting you in your place. They're trying to shrink you down to their size. Hallelujah. They can't understand why you think, why you want to have meaningful dialogues and critical conversations, why you explore territories that have not yet explored that, why it is that you want to go places other people haven't gone, why it is that you want to try things that nobody else has ever done because there is something different in your DNA that I am in the world but I'm not of the world I can't hear nobody and see a whole lot of people who don't understand you don't understand there's a David banner in me you won't like me if I'm angry hallelujah I try to be nice but if you push me all the way there you gonna see a person you didn't even know existed can I talk to some real people I love God I quote scripture I listen to gospel music in the morning but in the back of me is a few little cuss words and I'm trying to suppress that but you keep trying to make another dimension of me come out <laughs> so you have to be on guard you have to be on guard and activate your ADT alarm system for people who profess, hear this, to love you who have not gotten to know you. You can't love me too soon. Tell them, hold that. God, I can't hear nobody. It sounds good, and I know weaker-minded women would fall for that, but I don't want you to tell me what you think I want to hear. Don't say it until you can stand by it, and when you can stand by it, you'll be able to live through it. When Job lost everything, his wife admonished him, curse God, and die. He responded back to Mrs. Job, why can't the same God that give takes away? That's because Mrs. Job only thought that the only thing that God does was increase and didn't know that I also serve a God that subtracts. If in fact you're going to be a Christian, you have to stop doing this cotton candy gospel of thinking that every time you worship, there's going to be a harvest, an overflow, and an increase. That's just one dimension of God. But when you really know God, you got to understand there are going to be some years where, notice I didn't say days, there will be some years where you're not sure how you're going to make it. Your ancestors said, working from can't see to can't see there. There'll be some difficult moments where you got to be by yourself. That There'll be some seasons where you hate your job, your co-workers, your paycheck, and the Negroes that live in your house. But after you come through that, you'll be able to say through it all I learned to trust in Jesus through it all I learned to trust in God I don't want to be around saints that only know one dimension of him but I need some saints around me that understand if I suffer with him then I'll reign with him I need some saints that no weeping may endure for a night but joy comes in the morning I only need three or four people that know out of experience he may not come when I want him to come but he's an on time God (laughs) 
When Jesus, I talked about it at 730, when Jesus was walking on the, on the water, the disciples thought they had seen a ghost simply because they didn't recognize him in a storm. They had only seen him on mountains, hills, and valleys, but they had never seen him go through something that could have swallowed him whole. I'm going to say to you, please, ladies and gentlemen, don't fall in love with anybody who's not prepared to see you walk through a storm. Hallelujah. Y'all just missed what I just said. If they can only love you when you look like a Mac counter, if they can only love you, watch this, when you balling out of control, it ain't going to last, boo. But if you can find somebody that'll love you when you still got sleep in your eye, when you need to swish around some Listerine, when, when your hair ain't dead, when your wig is crooked, when your shoes are run over, when there's a run in your stocking, and they still look at you and say, you are the bomb doc car that's when you found somebody that loves you when you're walking through your storm Jesus tried to warn us about himself and in warning us about himself he said my ways are not like your ways my thoughts are not like your thoughts but I still love you but you look at your neighbor and tell them it ain't a whole lot of people like me a whole lot of people don't think like me and a whole lot of people won't say what I say so it takes somebody special to love me hallelujah the last three people you were with before me were prepping you for the real thing you, you ought to be thanking God that God served your life long enough for you to meet somebody as genuine real authentic and bona fide as me look at your neighbor telling me when you look for my name in the book of life it is a blue check because I'm verified I'm verified because God knows he can trust me even when I go through a star would you shake that neighbor's hand tell him I'm verified I learned how to bless God when I had no money in my pocket I'm verified I loved him with my whole heart when I had nobody who loved me at home I'm verified I come to church when it's rain when it's snowing and when it's sunny outside I'm verified I'm verified because I learned how to love him when I'm up and when I'm down I'm verified because I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth those of y'all that are standing rock with me would you do me a favor please will you just give God glory just for loving you even with all of your facets all of your dimensions all of your shifts all of your changes I still love God In Matthew chapter 16, the church leaders came to Jesus. Be seated, please. In Matthew chapter 16, the church leaders came to Jesus looking for a sign. They came looking for a sign because people, I want you to please have this, it's going to bless your life. People who don't know you always want you to prove yourself. Did y'all hear what I just said? I said, people that don't know you always want you to prove yourself. But you have to, in fact, operate under the conviction, I am not auditioning for a role I already have. God, 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 I can't hear nobody in here. I, I, I'll never forget when I went to uh, Whitney Houston's funeral. Uh, Kevin Costner came up to give uh, uh, reflections during that funeral. Uh, we were in New Jersey, and Kevin Costner said Whitney Houston was uh, nervous about auditioning for the body guard because she had never acted before, never been in a movie before. And Kevin Costner said, I, I took her through the screen tests. Uh, but what Whitney didn't know is she already had the role. I had never seen her act. I had never seen her in a movie. She had never been in a play. But because the gift in her was so real, I knew she could have it whether she could read it or not. And I need 500 of y'all ought to be shouting right now because God told me to tell you the role is already yours. You ain't got a position. You ain't got to play games. You ain't got to act like nothing.
something for somebody else God said I got you right in this position because you've been faithful over a few things I'm getting ready to make you ruler over many some of y'all are shouting over cars clothes and money but I need 800 of y'all to shout why for the role you getting ready to play for the position you getting ready to hold out on for the act that you getting ready to do God's got something amazing for your life they wanted him to prove himself and Jesus got away from those strangers that didn't know him he talked to his inner circle Talk to his friends. We know him as disciples. And he asked to them, who do people say that I am? And they said, watch this, Jesus. Some people say you John the Baptist. Other people saying you Elijah. Others saying you Jeremiah. Other people saying you just one of the prophets. I want you to understand because of the complexity of who it is that you are, people can't agree on who you are. God, I can't hear nobody. So there's so many different opinions about you and none of them are true. The old black woman in the civil rights movement, Fannie Lou Hamer said, it is not what you're called, it's what you ask, answer to. Hallelujah, you gotta make up in your mind. It don't matter what none of these Negroes think about me because I know who I am. I am the head and not the tail. I, I am above and not beneath. Is there anybody that knows I'm a lender and not a borrower would you lay hands on yourself say I know who I am I am the chosen seed of Abraham I am God's favorite child I, I will have more than enough I know who I am I may not be your cup of tea but somebody likes coffee I'm so thankful that I know who I am says after I talk to all of them and you tell me what other people say I gotta ask a critical question because you roll with me you've been eating with me you've been traveling with me hallelujah we've been sleeping together uh, we've been seeing miracles happen for the last three years and now I gotta ask you something because I ain't never asked you this before Jesus didn't ask him do you love me he wanted to know who do you think I am and I'm telling y'all this week, you got to recalibrate some relationships and friendships and ask some people, who do you think I am? I am not your mama. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. I am not your maid. I am not your Uber driver. You, if you don't recognize who I am by now, then you need to go to the want ads. I can't hear nobody. He asked them, who do you say that I am? He asked all 12 but only one of them answer can I say to you you can be surrounded by a whole lot of people but it ain't that many people that really know you you got a lot of associates but not that many friends I need you to elbow your neighbor and say don't feel bad most people don't get me most people don't understand who I am and that's why I spend a whole lot of time by myself and because you see me by myself it don't mean I'm lonely it don't mean I'm depressed it don't mean I'm thirsty it means I'm satisfied with me and I am comfortable in my own skin who do you say that I am and Simon Peter said you are the Christ you are the son of the living God. Y'all, I got to get out of here. And Jesus then focuses his attention on Simon Peter and says, because you know who I am, you are going to be blessed. Y'all don't know when to shout. God says, I'm getting ready to bless people that understand who you really are and love you anyway. Hallelujah. Can you love me even while I'm flawed? Even while I'm broken and halfway crazy? Can you love me anyway? I need you to grab that neighbor by the hand. Sean, I feel like having church. I say, grab that neighbor by the hand and say, once you know me, you may not love me, but I 
serve a God that loves me in spite of me. He looks beyond all of my faults and he sees me at my knees. The old songwriter said, I don't know why Jesus loves me. I don't know why he cares. I don't know why he sacrificed his life, but I'm so glad. I'm so glad he did. He said, Simon Peter, because you know who I am, I'm getting ready to bless you, and I'm blessing you not with a house, not with a million dollars, not with a new job, but I'm blessing you with a set of keys, and the keys I'm giving you, you don't even understand. They not gonna get you in the Wells Fargo. It ain't gonna get you in the MeQ. It ain't gonna get you in the Bank of America. But the keys I'm giving you, whatsoever you loose in heaven, shall be loose in the earth. And whatsoever you bind in the earth, shall be bound in heaven. I need you to give your neighbor a hand and say, neighbor, he love me to give me the keys. I can't hear no money in here. I was taking my daughters home and we got to the house. I said, which one of y'all got the key? Grace is the oldest. Angel and the door are the twins. And the door is the baby of the twins. And I said, which one of y'all got the key? Cause mama ain't home And the door said I got the key I said how do you have the key And you're the youngest And she said because I'm the only one That won't lose Is that mama knows That if she gives me the key I'm gonna hold on to it Grace will leave it in the locker Angel will leave it in the desk But if I get the key I'll open up the door and I came to tell somebody the reason why he trusts me is because he knows I'm going to use the key. What you going to use the key for? Whatsoever I loose in heaven shall be loosed in the earth. Is there anybody here that needs something from heaven? He said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I'll hear from heaven and I'll heal the land. What y'all shouting for? Because whatever I prayed for is on the way. If you believe your prayer is on the way, praise him like whatever I ask. He's going to do exceedingly. He's going to do abundantly. He's going to do beyond what I can think, what I dream, and what I imagine. But he ain't just loosened whatsoever. I bind in the earth shall be bound. He said, if you shout, I'll bind depression. I'll bind loneliness. I'll bone every bill. Don't wait till the battle is over. But shout like I'm loose. Hey. Hey. Give three people a high five and say, loose it, loose it, loose it, loose it. I can't hear nobody Give two more people a high five And tell them it's yours It's yours It's yours It's yours hear nobody you shout like you don't believe it I said by Easter Sunday morning whatever you pray for is yours hey, bless your holy name lift that hand please 
Hamasha. Hamasha. Lift that hand, please. Says I'm only giving the key. I'm only giving the key to people who really know me. If you don't really know me, I can't trust you with the keys. Because you may lose them. Lift that hand right where it is that you want to please. Hallelujah. Says I don't release this key until you really understand who I am. Because if you don't really know me, you're going to ask me for stuff that doesn't line up with my will. If you know me, you can't be praying for somebody else's husband. God, I can't hear nobody if you, if you know me, I ain't gonna bless you just because you're in competition with somebody else. When you get to know my heart and stop looking for my hand, that's when I can trust you with your own set of keys. I need that hand lifted. I want to pray for you. I want um, God to give you a set of keys for, for Valentine's Day. You get ready to go in the doors you're not qualified for. God, I wish I had some worshipers right through here. You, you get ready to assume a position that nobody ever thought you would have. That hand is lifted. God says, I'm entrusting you with keys. You didn't even know that you had access to that is not um, valid just in heaven but you have authority in the earth do you know how anointed you are that you got power to lock up stuff police are out of their constitutional role they don't first identify themselves because they have to reveal their authority before they can execute their power many of you the enemy is not afraid of you because you don't identify who you are and I'm a child of the king I'm a joint heir and as a consequence I have authority to bind up the spirit of witchcraft on my job I got the authority to bind up cancer cells that are in my loved one's body. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray over every lifted hand that somewhere in the course of the next seven days you'll reveal a set of keys. I pray, dear Lord, that you'll give them access into stuff they were locked out of. I pray that you'll bless them in spite of them. I pray, dear Lord, that this week you'll throw them a surprise party. Give them what eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. Those of you, your faith is connected to my faith. And you're thankful, I want you to hear me very carefully, that you're getting to know God at a deeper level. If that's where you are, would you give God your best sound of thanksgiving? I can't believe y'all ain't gonna shout better than that. I'm getting to know him at a deeper level. 